Once again, good evening, everyone, and welcome to Meadowlands Racing and Entertainment on this very special night of remembrance for our colleague Dave Brower. Horsemen, family, and friends joined in the ceremonial assembly in the winner's circle to create a horseshoe here in memory of Dave Brower. David Joseph Brower, Jr., passed away on Friday, October 7th, while on assignment in Lexington, Kentucky. He was a native of Passaic, New Jersey, only 53 years of age. His passing was sudden and shocking. Born February 5th, 1969, Dave Brower was a longtime broadcaster, handicapper, and odds maker here at the Meadowlands, a great employee, an ultimate colleague, and a friend of racing. He is survived by his loving mother, Rose, his sister, Laura, nephews, Devin and Mason, an extended family of aunts, uncles, and cousins. A 1991 graduate of St. John's University with a journalism degree. He was a sports editor for St. John's Today. Now, before becoming a broadcaster, he was a caretaker, trainer's assistant. He worked with horses. He was a teletimer operator and public relations intern. A racing fan since age 10, Dave Brower worked in just about every aspect of the sport. In addition to the Meadowlands and Hamiltonian shows, Brower often worked major events like the Little Brown Jug, the Red Mile Grand Circuit, and the Breeders' Crown. He was a mainstay on many of the sport's biggest days. And Dave fell in love with racing by going to the Meadowlands with his father, David Sr., in the 1980s. Over the next several decades, he would become a true 24-7 racing fan. He was an advertisement for the sport, a constant figure front and center at every major race. Dave had a well-earned opinion about horses and races. He loved going to qualifiers to spot a future winner and greatly enjoyed the camaraderie. Dave evolved from proficient chart caller into a full-fledged, polished presenter, an analyst, a commentator, and interviewer. He was a regular on the Inside Track show, which was a taped 30-minute show, but he was equally adept when called upon to do live TV. Dave could always rely on his experience, his deep knowledge, his pure talent to pull anything off on the spot. He was a published author writing a handicapping book, Harnessing Winners, back in 2009, and he assisted aspiring journalists in the annual Clyde Hurt Workshop during Hamiltonian Week. In recent years, he became Mr. Social Media, utilizing those platforms to inform and entertain. And he was always on top of industry news, current events. He was ready for the shout-outs, the congratulations, and the birthdays. Dave always had time to say hello. His passion was to bring harness racing to the forefront as a goodwill ambassador. He was the ultimate professional, a great asset to the business. He was a shining star, a gift to harness racing, and a great American. In 19, or make that 2019, in 2019, Dave was awarded the Phil Pines Award. The Phil Pines Award recognized his decades of outstanding media coverage in the sport of harness racing and exemplified the spirit of his hard work and his commitment to his craft. Dave was also a foodie. He loved food. He was a great cook. He loved to spend time at his friend's lake house in upstate New York. And, of course, he enjoyed many other sports, rooting for the New York Yankees and the New York Rangers. There have been several great written tributes. There was a touching salute from our friends at the uh, Woodbine Entertainment Group, along with a, a ceremony at the Red Mile. And Dave's sister, Laura, said it best. The, the Meadowlands is the perfect place to have Dave's celebration of life. He loved his job. He loved all of the people at the track, those who work here, the horsemen and the racing fans. And tonight gives everyone a chance to exchange stories where he had such an important personality. Dave loved a big night of races. And so this is appropriate tonight. We have the kindergarten finals on the card, a night of great racing. This is a tremendous loss to the industry. Dave will be missed by the entire horse racing community. Destined for the Hall of Fame, the Harness Racing Hall of Fame, Dave Brower was an inspiration. His legacy will live on forever. And our thoughts and our prayers are with his family, his friends, and his legion of racing fans. May they find some comfort from his life's work and the lives he touched. 
as the horsemen make their way from the back paddock uh, to join friends and family in the winner's circle tonight. We salute Dave Brower, and we drive on in his honor. In just a few moments, Dave Little at the microphone with special guests and commentary here tonight. Thanks for joining us. Ken, thanks very much. Abraham Lincoln once said, in the end, it's not the years in your life that count. It's the life in your years. And the great Jackie Robinson, a life is not important except in the impact it has on other lives. We're here tonight because Dave Brower had that impact on all of us. At this time, I'd like to introduce the Meadowlands Chief Operating Officer and General Manager, Jason Suttermore, to speak about Dave. Jason, tell us, first and foremost, how can we comprehend and deal with the loss of Dave Brower? Well, this loss, again, uh, as I've said, has been catastrophic uh, to not only just the Meadowlands, but the entire horse racing industry. Uh, Dave was well-loved and respected uh, throughout the industry. Dave and I spent uh, many years uh, as friends, personal friends, and Dave came to work here, um, you know, obviously several years ago and took a short break and then came back again uh, to work here at the Meadowlands with us again. And um, just Dave is one of those guys uh, that always was smiling and interacting with everybody. Uh, as Ken spoke about on social media, but it didn't stop there. When people were coming in the doors, he was always the first one to smile and wave at somebody and say hello, and as they were going up the escalators. Um, and that's something that I, I miss to this day. Uh, it was something I missed last night and last weekend, uh, going up the escalator and looking over and seeing you and Dave and, and, and waving at uh, both of you and getting that Brower smile. And you know, and seeing the Swedish fish sitting out on the on the desk, because um, Dave was definitely a foodie too. Um, but it, it's catastrophic. Dave was a a great friend and a great associate to work with, and he's certainly going to be missed in the entire industry. But in particularly here at the Meadowlands, the Little Brown Jug, and down at the Red Mile. You spoke about uh, Dave kind of took uh, a self-imposed semi-retirement from harness racing for about six, seven years. But then I know that you went after him aggressively to bring him back to the Meadowlands. Why were you so fired up to get Dave uh, back on the payroll? I thought Dave always brought something very special uh, to the Meadowlands. And he was synonymous with the Meadowlands. And uh, to see him nod at the desk, um, I thought was, was, you know, like it is now, tragic. Uh, because his wealth of knowledge about the industry and the sport and the people that he knew and how he interacted with our customers and, and the people that are involved here in the sport. Um, but I aggressively had went after him, quite honestly, in Goshen, New York, one year. Um, and it had to do with, uh, a lot of it had to do with health insurance, too. I wanted to get him back on the right track there uh, as far as health insurance was concerned. And uh, so he had health insurance and, uh, you know, try to take care of him that way, too. And it just... You know, he and, and Dave was a jack of all trades, and I'll tell you who you know. And, and uh, the McKees have made their way here this evening because they're a class family. Um, but Dave reminded me quite a bit of Sam McKee, and um, to say something like that, uh, Sam was a world-class guy, and so was Dave Brower. You know, much like Sam, Dave was always a guy. I mean, as I uh, you know said last week in my little speech to Dave. He was always the best guy in the room, no questions asked, and yet he was always so busy complimenting others on how good a job they were doing. And I just thought to myself, you know, I never really told him how great he was because that high level of excellence is just what we came to expect from Dave. 
Yeah, no, uh, that's absolutely true. And every time you look at Dave, uh, Dave was always working behind the desk. If he wasn't working behind the desk, he was talking to the customers. And uh, that's always what uh, made me smile about Dave. And Dave no, knew no strangers and uh, always welcomed everybody. And, you know, one of the things that I always joked about, and particularly with uh, one of his best friends, Nick Salvi, was that Dave would put up his phone number on Facebook and, and Twitter and say, if you want to talk harness racing, give me a call. And I was like, oh, you know, what are you doing? Yeah, what exactly. are you doing? Exactly. What, are you crazy? Yeah. But, you know, he was just that type of person. He loved the sport. Um, he loved the Meadowlands. He loved Delaware, Ohio. And he loved the Red Mile, too. Um, and he's, this is certainly a gigantic coal um, in all of our hearts. And, you know, I guess the one thing that I can take away from this is, is that um, I've got to meet his sister, Laura, um, and have talked to her a few times, and then his beautiful mother, Rose, as well. Um, and on behalf of all of us here at the Meadowlands, our staff, uh, Mr. Gorral and myself, uh, we certainly um, are devastated by this, and if there's anything that we can do, we're here for the Brower family. Yeah, they say people are uh, irreplaceable, but you know anybody can be replaced, I should say, but Dave is one of those guys. It's going to be awfully tough to replace. Yeah, it, it, that's the truth. Um, you know, just same thing. Um, you know, just like uh, with Sam. Um, Sam and I were close too, um, and this has been pretty tough the last several years. Um, because there's nothing that can replace those smiles and those handshakes and, and the sayings that they have. Um, and Dave was he, was, he was a great guy. Jason, we thank you very much. And thank you very much for bringing Dave Brower to us for the last six years or so. Yeah, it was, uh, I just thought this is where Dave belonged, was at the Meadowlands. Absolutely. Well, thanks very much, Jason Settlemore. Right now, I want to bring up my friend Bob Hayden, who certainly did his share of work with Brower throughout the years. Uh, I suspect much like me, he probably knew Dave about three decades. You know, Bob, I saw your column in Harness Racing Update a couple of weeks ago, and uh, the spirit of the headline was dealing with the incalculable loss of Dave Brower. Can you expand on that? Yeah, because uh, I think myself, maybe more of a fanning, probably no longer than anybody else when he was a teenager in the late 80s at the Menlands. We used to call him a press box pest. <laughs> And I think he was the first one to agree that he was. Remember, he graduated uh, college in 91, so he just started out. But he was, a, he was actually a wannabe who eventually became and actually was. You know, a lot of people want to be. A lot of people want to do this, that, and the other. One story I didn't relate in that article, it's, I want to mention, I, I remember in 1993, he was on the phone with a trainer making training and equipment suggestions for Pacific Rocket. The guy he was talking to was the trainer of the year and the horse of the year, Bill Robinson. So he was 24 years old and, tell, and, and I, you had to love a guy who had that kind of enthusiasm. Who won, he, was he timed, I believe, the 1989 Dead Heat Hamiltonian. And uh, he, was, he was everywhere. He wanted to do everything. And by the time the mid-90s, maybe the late 90s rolled around, he actually showed that he did have, he was like a five-star player in baseball, he did have the repertoire. Did anybody in harness racing over the last uh, generation or so have more of an impact on a national TV level than Dave Brower? He went, in the last 10, 12 years, Dave entered the mentoring stage of his career. Um, a lot of guys try to do a lot before they say 40 or so, and then all of a sudden you realize, wait a second, I can't drive, I'm going to be a judge, and all that kind of thing maybe comes into play. With Dave, I think his experience kind of brought him along where he was happy and major, an extended hand to everybody he saw. I mean, it, Sam McKee was the same type of way. I'm bumping into people that I would have no idea how they knew Dave, who were telling me the things he did for them. Same thing happened with Sam McKee. So, you know, the, the fact that they were willing to take their years and share their years with people uh, was one of the best qualities I think they've had. You know, what about when Dave was a young man, if he was in his mid-20s, and he had to replace who you and I refer to as the Babe Ruth of Morning Line Odds Makers, Charlie Singer. And Dave tackled that job, and uh, for two decades, he did it about as well as anybody can do it. Yeah, it's like being an umpire in a World Series. You don't know who was the umpire unless there's a big gaffe, uh, you know, that Don Denkinger, 1985 type thing. But Dave, he took over that job, tough job to do, because they only recognize if there's a mistake or something. But, but the fact that he put on all the, he tried on every hat in harness racing. And as far as he's concerned, they all fit. He wanted to, you know, if one didn't fit here or there, it didn't make any difference. He kept at it. 
and uh, he was a 24-7 guy. Like I said, at the, towards the end, the last 10 or 12 years, I mean, you couldn't go somewhere or whatever that Dave wasn't part of it in some way. You know, guys like you and me have been doing harness racing TV for an awful long time, but I think it's fair to say that Dave Brower, the level of polish that he brought to his on-camera presence really was second to none. Yeah, he really was comfortable doing what he did, you know. It's hard to transition sometimes from tape, because a lot of stuff we did in the 90s, or a little before that, was on tape. You taped the show during the night. Inside Track was a 30-minute show from 98 to 2001 that was taped. And he was awfully good at it, but that doesn't always translate to live, right? But it did for Dave. He, was, he had a comfort level. And you can tell how much, I think, how well a guy maybe fits in, because the TV set here is right next to the escalator. Everybody going up and down knew Dave. You know what I mean? There was nothing, there was, the familiarity was amazing. Uh, and each year he grew more and more comfortable in what he was doing. And then he started expanding that, going to the, the jug and going to Red Mile and things like that. So it all worked out for him. And he, he was just, a, he was at, like I said, the mentoring stage, the happy stage, you know, the kind of less, I, I, maybe, maybe like a manager in baseball a little bit. You know what I mean? He was, all those things kind of rolled into one. Finally, Bobby, the, uh, the hole that Dave has left, we know that it's huge. How do we fill that hole, or do we just say, well, we can't? I once told Brad Thomas at SportsEye, he left there in the mid-80s. I told Brad, I said, I have good news for you. The four people who replaced you are all doing quite well. And that's kind of the same type of thing, right? So, you know, because you have to try different things. It's almost like a, a player going down in baseball where you have three or four utility people that next thing you know, they're trying it, they're whatever. So that's, I think, where the stage is at. I mean, there's not much you can do. Everybody got hit with a thunderbolt in early October. And you just, right now, we're doing the best we can. And I was telling someone before, the first day I heard this and today is kind of the same for me. You know what I mean? I don't really feel that it's just still the same kind of, you know, this can't be real type of thing going on. And with Dave, you know, to replace him, it's going to take time. Bob Hayden, thanks so very much uh, for your time. And, you know, we miss Dave Brower very much, and I know you do too. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I love the, the show, uh, the, the people that are here tonight. It's wonderful. No, it is a great turnout. You know, one more interview I want to do. Bobby, thanks so much. I want to talk to somebody who worked with uh, Dave an awful lot, and that's Gabe Pruitt. Gabe, if you would come forward, please. Uh, you were the last guy to work with Dave. I work with him every Friday and Saturday night for the last five years. But uh, you and Dave were the team out at uh, Lexington's Red Mile for uh, the last how many years? I think Dave was there at least the last four or five years. Um, yeah, we walked out together the last day. Uh, we worked together, and uh, everyone will appreciate the fact that uh, the last bet Dave made on horse racing, uh, he cashed at Ice Ticket. What? He cashed? Get out of here. He cashed. He waited on me. It was pretty rough conditions that day. It was the last Saturday, the first week of Grand Circuit, probably the 40s, breezy. And he always waited for me downstairs. The first thing we did before we decided what we were going to do for the night was talk about our, our gambling for the day. And, uh, yeah, he cashed an ice ticket and made about 1500 bucks and uh, we went out and had a nice dinner to uh, celebrate. All right, now let's talk a little bit about uh, Dave Brower, the foodie. The last text I get from the guy, he's at a Wings restaurant. I'm not going to mention the chain. He's at a Wings restaurant. He sends me a text and he says, the Wings stink here. Now, wait, wait, come on, wait, wait, what is with this guy? That was an accurate review, but uh, the football <laughs> games are okay and uh, the, everything else there was okay. But yeah, the, uh, the Wings are not great. <laughs> What are some of the things about Dave that you found to be his strong suits during your association with him working on harness racing? Well, yeah, I just think his encouragement. You know, myself, I can remember as a young guy, you know, my introduction to the sport, probably not going to surprise Betty, but I, when I sort of was introduced from the wagering standpoint of going to the track and, and betting, I didn't have any horse background. And, you know, at that time when I was uh, beginning to go to the track, it was, you know, Holly and Ken and, and, and Dave and Sam, you know, and I never wanted to miss the pregame show up here. And, you know, I, I, I would read Dave's comments every night and find out, uh, you know, who he liked. And I just think, you know, his encouragement to so many of us in the business, uh, you know, as you said, he had so many good things to say. And uh, he was just so pleasant, a friend to everyone. I mean, you know, you and I have, you know, lost one of our best friends and, and you know, a, a brother. But, uh, you know, much more so than you and I, the business, you know, has lost, uh, you know, one of our greatest ambassadors. And it's just, uh, it's tough. We want to know, since you were with him, how was he the last couple of days that you knew him, his usual self, I assume? You know what? He was Dave, yeah. He actually, uh, you know, I know he'd not, not been feeling great, you know, earlier into the, the winter and the spring, and obviously there was some concern there for a while, but uh, he was tired coming out of Delaware, I think as anyone would be, working those type of, uh, you know, 200 race cards that they have there all week. And he got to Lexington, and, you know, he was enjoying the sale uh, that week. You know, he was at the sale the day before, and 
Uh, we obviously were getting geared back up to race that uh, that second week, and you know all the talk was about the racing, and you know, obviously Bulldog Hanover was coming down there to take his shot uh, at history, and you know Dave was uh, his usual self. I mean, he was uh, seemed to be feeling really good. He was very positive, uh, you know, and uh, we were just really enjoying ourselves. You know, as, as I mentioned before, he was always busy telling everybody else how good a job they did, but it's really hard to quantify how good he was at this. Yeah, it really was, you know, and Dave, we're, we're so lucky to have had Dave in uh, harness racing or horse racing because, you know, he truly could have broadcast anything. You know, he just had that type of uh, polish and professionalism, uh, you know, so uh, he made all of us that worked with him better. You know, I, I'm certainly not a broadcaster. I'm just a guy who likes to bet on horses that, that happens to sit with a microphone beside you guys sometimes. But, you know, I think when you work with Dave, you know, he would just elevate you to a, to a different level by, uh, you know, he knew what, what to say and how to uh, pretty much, you know, light everyone's fuse how he needed to. It's going to be tough moving forward with that Dave Brower, isn't it? You know, it is from a personal standpoint and professionally as well. Yeah, it's, 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 it's tough on all of us. Well, Gabe Pruitt, thanks as always. And, of course, you're going to be uh, sitting beside me tonight on set. So, yeah, sure. How about a nice hand for Gabe Pruitt and everybody who talked to us tonight about our good friend Dave Brower? Now, ladies and gentlemen, everyone who works here at the Meadowlands thinks of Dave Brower as our brother. And we have created this video as a tribute to him. Thank you to everyone who provided photos and helped put it together. Dave, we all miss you very much. But we look forward to the day when we'll see you again sailing on the ships of heaven. And now, ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I'd like to escort Dave's mom, Rose, and sister, Laura, out to the track for the spreading of Dave's ashes. And we'll get a few words from Laura once we get out there. Let's go, folks. Okay, everyone, I'm joined by Dave's mom, Rose, and his little sister, Laura. And Laura's got a few words to say before we spread the ashes. Laura? On behalf of my mother and the rest of my family, I would like to thank Jeff Corral, Jason Settlemore, everyone who works and races at the Meadowlands, and all the harness racing fans, from being here tonight to honor my brother, Dave. I mean, what can I say? Dave was a great guy. He was my big brother and the rock of our family. He was always there for us. And after reading so many of your kind online tributes, social media posts, direct messages, cards, and the overwhelming attendance tonight, I know in some way, shape, and form, he was there for all of you too. Because his family and the sport of harness racing was everything to him. For someone to have a meaningful life, it's not about being rich, popular, highly educated, or being perfect. It's more about being real, humble, and being able to share yourself by touching the lives of others. Dave's life, although short, was meaningful. He was humble, kind, smart, funny, and a fiercely loyal friend. Dave loved to laugh, and that's why, even though this is such a tough time for all of us, I think he would want us to remember him and laugh, thinking about all the fun times that we had. There will now be someone else sitting in his seat, and I'd really like for you to give them a chance. They are not here to replace him, and with the guidance that he instilled, they will be great too, and that will make him proud. I think all of you will agree that the best way to honor Dave would be to keep the sport of harness racing that he loved so deeply alive. Dave, 
I know one day we'll all be together again. But until then, just know that you will forever be in our hearts. Thank you all again for being here. It really means a lot to us. Thank you, Laura. Sure, absolutely. And now, so that Dave Brower will always be a part of the Meadowlands and the Meadowlands family, Laura and Rose are going to spread some of his ashes right here near the finish line at the Meadowlands racetrack. Do it together. I'd like the memory of me to be a happy one. I'd like to leave an afterglow of smiles when day is done. I'd like to leave an echo whispering softly down the ways of happy times and laughing times and bright and sunny days. I'd like the tears of those who grieve to dry before the sun of happy memories that I leave behind when day is done. Dave Brower, everybody here loved you very, very much. May you rest in peace until we meet again. Don't forget, upstairs, in Skybox 5 and 6, you can greet the family and say your hellos. They'll be up there all night. So please stop by and say your hellos to Laura and to Rose and their family, and let them know how much you cared about their Dave, or as when he was a kid, their Davey. He is someone we're truly going to miss forever. But he is forever in our hearts. And I do know this, that he would really love to be here tonight because he loved the big nights. And it's my job now to say, hey, Broward would want me to say, tonight we have four big stakes races, and he'd want you to stay and enjoy the races. And we have a big night planned. We're going to have, obviously, the Broward reception upstairs, and we're going to have some interviews on set. I'm going to have some friends of the family sharing some stories and sharing some well wishes. But for now, it's time to throw it to Ken Warkerton as we kick off the kindergarten finals card. Dave Brower, until we meet again. <laughs>